That thing's so clean, I can see myself in it. It's brand new. Brand new. Mm, low hours. <clears throat> low hours. Anything under a thousand or an hour is low. Yep. Many fish as much as me. Just built me a absolute brand new, from scratch, 7.6 heavy flipping rod. Just, I have wore out my other one. It's still in good shape. <clears throat> still catch a lot of fish with it. But, something about having a brand new one. I like to re-up every once in a while and get me a new one. Pretty exciting. First time I've ever strung this thing up. Brand new one. Look how pretty. Beautiful wraps on that thing. Did it all myself. All right, I need my flipping box, honey. Press that button on that reel. What you got? I got the brand new Gamakatsu <clears throat> G Power Hook, or I've got the uh, regular style heavy cover worm hook straight shank. What's the new one on? This is too small. We'll try it. We shall try it. Brand new. First time tying this sucker on. Got them at the Classic. Been asking about them for a long time, but we had this weird virus going around that put everything back a little ways. Finally get to tie one on. I love to tie one on. One thing you don't know about me. I love to tie one on. Back it up. Favorite setup. Now it's focused. Favorite setup, right there. It's beautiful. Get in there. Top five summer baits. Which Old monster. Football jig. Big shaky head. 10XD. How many is that? Four? And you gotta have a drop shot. There's my five. You can't Google top five best That's summer baits. That's new school. That's new school. Get off new school. This is top five summer baits according to Google. Swim jig, I concur. Crankbait, I concur. Plastic crawl, I concur. Topwater frog, and spinnerbait. I'm gonna be honest with you. The spinnerbait for me is a lot more of a pre-spawn fall type of deal. Water temp in the 75 or less range. For me personally, unless you're really, really burning it or something. So I'm gonna take that spinnerbait out and put a buzz bait in. Then we'll get my stuff. Rolling. Alright, it is June the 28th now. We are officially past post spawn, at least down here in the south we are. I know up north there's still some small mouth spawning, still some large mouth spawning, but in the south, the post spawn is officially behind us, and I'm glad because those fish, as soon as they get done spawning, they scatter out from 2 feet to 30 feet, and they get extremely difficult to catch. But it's summertime now. I think the uh, summer solstice is what, June the 26th, Hunter? You smarty? I think it's the 21st, ain't it? 21st? Something like that. Summer solstice. We, anyway, we passed it. So now the days are getting shorter. But the fish are the most aggressive this time of year, at least in my opinion. It's, it's just really difficult to figure out where they're located. So I'm going to tell you kind of how I approach summertime bass fishing. You know, they really, you have to downsize your baits and line and everything when the immediate post spawn because they they get really funky when they come off bed they're just kind of not in that eating mood and this time of year they cruise around a ton they roam around a ton most of the fish don't sit still even when you, you see these guys catching big you know schools of fish offshore on ledges or whatever the fish don't just sit there day after day after day after day they pull up on certain places at certain times for certain reasons and they other than that they pretty much cruise around if it's offshore flats offshore bars or shallow around brim beds and docks in two or three feet of water they do a lot of cruising so i'm going to show you the baits that i try to throw i kind of put down the jigs and stuff this time of year pre-spawn even in the post bone, I, I flip around the ace jig a lot, but 
this time of year I go to a lot more you know creature style baits soft plastic style baits that are a lot more thin longer and thinner profiles seem to get more bites in the summer months like you throw something like this uh, missile baits quiver worm this thing gets the most bites of anything pretty much in the summertime just any of that long slender profile just seems to really make them react this time of year it's all about putting them in front of it it's not hard to get bites if, if you're fishing shallow and you're a round fish they'll bite top water they'll bite flipping this worm around they'll bite flipping around a d-bomb well whatever you want to do it's just really hard to locate them so i'm gonna take y'all through the rods reels baits lines lures hooks everything that i use for targeting these fish if i'm gonna fish shallow it's usually going to be a two-way deal this time of year. I'll, if y'all watch any of my videos at all, y'all already know I like frogging and flipping. So I'm going to pick up my absolute favorite lure in the entire world right here, a Spro Poppin' Frog. The standard size, since we have a big one out now, and a small one. This is the original. And another thing, I've got right here a Missile Baits Destroyer. This is a bait that I've been using recently, flipping a little bit deeper in clear water. I've been catching a bunch on it. But... It's just a standard creature bait with big tails, missile baits destroyer. This is on a half ounce weight. This is a four alt Gamakatsu G Power hook, 22 pound Sunline shooter, an eight to one Metanium, and a seven six point blank and Fuji rod that I hand built myself. Very similar setup on this one. I've got the seven six Fuji point blank. I've, I use a little bit bigger guides for my braid rods. This is 50 pound Sunline X Plasma. And uh, this is a 8 to 1 Shimano Corrado 70 MGL with a standard Spro Poppin' Frog. If I'm, if I'm covering water shallow in the summer and I'm trying to flip or frog, I'm looking for shade, I'm looking for heavy cover, I'm looking for under docks, under laydowns, anywhere that I feel like a fish is going to, you know, stop for a minute, you know, in between cruising around. Because in my opinion, in the summer, they cruise around a ton, like I've already said. And all those places where I feel like one just might stop for just a minute and maybe feed or something like that, I'm going to throw that spro frog or else flip that in there. Now, another thing that I do early in the morning or pretty much any time, if I've got big shade lines or something and I feel like the frog is a little bit too slow, I'll just pick up a dang buzz bait and roll on with it. I throw this on the same 50-pound sun line. X Plasma, a seven, uh, eight to one gear ratio Shimano Corrado, seven foot three point blank rod, seven foot three medium heavy, and I just try to cover as much water as I possibly can with this. That's whenever I'm fishing shallow. Those are my three main things. I've got a covering water bait, I've got a slow down and fish top water bait, and sometimes I'll throw a prop bait or something like that, and then I've got the flipping bait if I get around any heavy cover. So then you're going to move a little bit more offshore in the south. A big deal is throwing these deeper diving crankbaits. This right here is a Fat Papa 55. It doesn't dive super deep, but what I've been doing recently is fishing a lot of brush piles. This gets down there in that 8, 9, 10 range on 10 pound test. I actually made this thing hit in like 11 or 12. I can't remember exactly the deepest I've got it to hit, but I get to hit the top of them brush piles in 9 or 10 pretty easily. And then that's my number one thing that I'm going to pull up and throw first because I feel like this bait catches the biggest fish in the brush pile immediately. And if I'm fishing offshore ledges, rock bars, anything like that, rock piles, stuff that's a little bit harder, I'll throw the bigger crankbait, you know, like a Fat Papa 70 or whatever I'm trying to throw that's a little bit deeper. I'll throw that to the harder cover that's a little bit deeper. And then you got to have your follow-up bait. I'll do everything with this from flipping it around dock posts, marina docks. It's just a dang worm in the summertime it's hard to beat a worm it's got a four alt round bin gamakatsu hook standard this is a three eighths ounce worm weight if i'm fishing you know 10 foot deep or less i'll downsize from that three eighths if i'm fishing you know 12 14 15 feet i'll usually go to this three eighths or bigger brush piles where i kind of want to pull it down a little bit more i'll go to a three eighths and actually peg the bait to try to pull that worm down in the brush pile a little bit more but sparse brush piles and stuff like that i'll just use the three eighths on the four alt and then you can throw any worm you want this is just the one that i've been catching on recently this is the missile quiver it's got a flat tail on it it's just a super slender profile and that's the main key for this time of year and then last but not least this is the bailout pole right here you got to have one of these ready at all time this is a seven foot three medium light point blank is that new i built it not long ago this is a new one that i just built yeah you like that it's pretty in it yeah i, I didn't know Looks you built that one put my hook keeper down in here for in case i was going to use a drop shot this is I like that this is the bait that you can throw anywhere you want to throw it just a shaky head this is a gamakatsu shaky head it's got a unique design head on it it's got a hook keeper that holds the worm on there and it's got an oceansi bend hook so you really don't lose very many on this thing but i throw this on a seven foot three medium light 
10 pound Sunline Shooter Leader to this is 18 pound Sunline X Plasma Braid. And then this is just the bailout rig. You can throw this around docks, you can throw this offshore on ledges, put a little, you know, a five inch worm on it, a six inch worm on it, a four inch worm on it, whatever you feel like you need to throw to get them to bite. But I throw this everywhere. I'll even pitch it up around seawalls if there's a little bit of shade or whatever. Some days that shaky head just gets bites whenever nothing else will. And I throw this no matter where. I leave it on the front deck rigged up all summer long. And I throw it whenever I feel like I'm around fish. I can't get to bite anything else. But for the most part in the summer, I'm covering water. I'm looking for those aggressive fish. So that's how I break down summer. That's kind of my approach to it. I feel like fish swim around a ton. And I just try to run a ton of spots where I feel like they're just going to sit up for just a minute or two. So that's my summer approach. Now I'm going to go do some summer fishing up in New York. If you've got any suggestions for more True Series videos, leave a comment down below, and we'll get on some of them if, if there's some good ideas. Appreciate it, guys.